Hi Ron and welcome to my review of the new Minis Forum Desktop Mini X35G. So this particular model here, Mini PC, is passively cooled, so there's a fan in it. It's powered by the Ice Lake, Intel Ice Lake 10th Gen. It's the Core i3 that's in this. We've got 16 gigabytes of RAM that cannot be upgraded because it's actually soldered into the motherboard. But for upgrades, we can add two SSDs to this or a spindle hard drive. 2.5 inch support and M.2 is what we can add. But as you'll see in this review that it's actually not that easy to add that additional storage into this one, sadly. So inside the box we have a quick start guide. It's in various different languages. We've got a power supply right here. Now this is rated to 36 watts. So we don't actually need a lot considering that this is a Core i3 model 10th gen, of course. We do get quite a few cables as well. So we've got a short display port to display port cable, HDMI 2 to HDMI 2, and we've got right here a SATA 3 connector. And I'll show you how to install a 2.5 inch drive in this, and then a Visa mount bracket as well with the various screws we are going to need. So I'll run through the ports, but just before I do so, let's have a look at how big it is. So it's about 12.5 centimeters by almost 13.5, 14 as you can see there, and the height of it is about four centimeters if you wanted to fit this into a TV cabinet. So we have a matte finish paint job here. This outer part of this mini PC is all made out of metal. You can see clearly the mini forum logo right there as well. And let's have a look at the ports up front. So we do have a Thunderbolt. So Thunderbolt three here, now this is 40 gigabits per second. Two USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports here. This is for reset. We have a microphone if you wanted to use Cortana. And of course, the power button. And on the side right here, we've got a micro SD card slot, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack with mic support. This is also an intake vent here. So right on this side is where the hot air is vented out right there. That's part of the, the thermal pipes and the copper transfer pipe is inside there. So that's where it's all vented out on there. And I'll report on the fan noise and thermals, of course, in this particular review. And then the back of it right here. So we've got two gigabit LAN, two USB 2 ports, HDMI 2.0A, and DisplayPort 1.4A. So both of these do support 4K60, also 4K60 from that Thunderbolt port there. Uh, actually 5K max it can do, so we can run three displays, a lock slot, and this of course for power in. And on the bottom, it just simply states the model number there, X35G, and this is where you will mount the Visa bracket if you were to put with the bracket there, this on the back of your TV or your monitor. So in order to get access into the internals here to install a 2.5 inch drive, you have to remove these little rubber feet, there's screws below that. I'll do that now and I'll show you how to install that 2.5 inch drive. Now the rubber feet were actually easy to get out, they're not stuck in place. A lot of them have like a bit of a sticky residue to it, but no, not here, it just pops off. So a little bit of a tip here that to get this whole back off, it's a little bit tricky because it's actually clipped into place. So what I did, is just screwing a little bit here, one of the screws used to mount it on the mounting bracket to put it on the back of a TV or monitor, and then simply pull up, and then you can get access here to the internal. So you can see that fan straight away, a little bit of copper here. There are their two wireless antennas. So we need to actually get access here to our plug, which is a little tricky to see and find here. So we've got this plastic in the way, and in order to do so, we're actually going to need to just remove this part here. Now there are two, four screws actually holding that into place, which I will do now. So this bit is a little bit tricky to get that drive into place. So those four screws are removed. This just needs to be then swung out to the side right here. And you can see upgrades very, very little. So what we've only got is, well, you can replace the wireless card right here. And we do have the RAM soldered on to the motherboard, so no RAM upgrades. And it's actually worse than I thought. We've got to remove the whole motherboard here to gain access to install that 2.5 inch drive. So you can see our SSDs, we can install a secondary one here. Uh, this is SATA 3, so this will be the 2280 size. And our NVMe drive is right here. It does have a heatsink on it with some thermal pads. So that is good. So this is the connector just down here to connect up our 2.5 inch drive, and then we need to screw it onto the bracket right here. So really this is a huge hassle, and one of the cons of this mini PC is adding your own 2.5 inch drive or a second 
22 by 80 millimeter M.2 drive is a huge hassle. So first up, I did proceed to go into the BIOS and sadly there are no settings that we can change in here, so we cannot increase the power limit. There is only the absolute basics and that is just to change our boot order. That's it. And when you first fire it up, these are the following language packs that are already pre-installed part of the Windows 10 image. And our Windows edition here that we have with this one, Windows 10 Pro, and it is fully activated digital license and there's no issues with this. So that is good that it's got a legit license. So I did take a look at our RAM. Now, as I showed you with the internals, it's not upgradable at all, which is a real shame, but with this kind of spec, I don't think it's too much of an issue. We've got ample RAM here, 16 gigabytes for a Core i3. Now it is running at 3.2 gigahertz, this RAM, in dual channel, which is good to see. Now, a couple other things to report on, that the drive speed, so MVME, PCIe drive, it's running not at the fastest speeds I have seen. It's not too bad. I mean, that's definitely faster than SATA 3. And if I take a look and just quickly show you here, the three free amount of storage that we've got here is 205 gigabytes. And once you start doing all those Windows updates, it'll probably bring it down to about 199 gigabytes there. So the wireless card is that Intel Wireless AC200. It's a very good card. I know some people have some problems with it, but I haven't experienced any issues with my router with this one. Maximum transfers are actually over gigabit LAN speeds, so that is good. And we do have the two gigabit LAN uh, controllers on here as well too, the ports there. Uh, that's Realtek also as well, as you can see, both of them listed there. So the chipset is low end, and yes, it is 10th gen. This is 10 nanometer, so finally off the 14 nanometer process. 3.4 gigahertz is the maximum turbo, and it does have a power limit of 15 watts, this one there. So dual core, but with the four threads in total. So moving over to just some general performance here and a few benchmarks, but I wanted to focus just on the video playback. So it's actually very good. We've got 10th gen integrated graphics here from Intel and native decoding. So this one is HEVC 10 bit, very demanding bit rate 4K and a little bit of a stutter there at the beginning, but uh, once it gets going, very good, smooth playback speeds. And this is great. So as a media player for demanding video files, including uh, this HDR one here as well, which is 60 frames per second. Absolutely no problems there. Very smooth, very quick. Now to talk about the general speed of Windows, start menu pops up really quick. Everything has been very snappy. So I won't show you those basic kind of things that I normally do. Uh, for example, like Google Chrome, because Google Chrome performance is good. It's fast, no issues with it. And just getting in and around really quick on this, even though it's just the two cores, four threads. Now Cinebench R15, as expected for a Core i3, even though it's 10th gen, and even though, yes, it's 10 nanometers, it is still super low end, very low end. So you wouldn't be doing anything really demanding on a system spec like this. Now this score is average, very kind of low and expected for this type of spec. So 360 CB there in Cinebench R15. And here we have a Geekbench 5 as well. So, I mean, that single core score for a maximum turbo of 3.4 is not actually too bad for dual core as well, multi-core score. It's okay, but again, low end. So you're not going to be playing AAA titles on this. Editing 4K video is semi-possible, but it's just way too slow. And I highly recommend against editing 4K video with this particular spec of mini PC. So for light work, documents and things like that, spreadsheets, this mini PC can handle it just fine. You may see the occasional tiny little bit of lag with just the two cores sometimes struggling with some heavy multitasking, but for basic computing, it definitely covers it, even this Core i3. And I did run 3D Mark as well, so Night Raid is kind of one recommended for integrated graphics. And again, not amazing, it's pretty average this score. Let's have a look at some older titles to see if a little bit of light gaming on the side can be actually possible with the 10th gen integrated UHD graphics here from Intel. So what I have set is 720p lowest possible visual settings just to hopefully keep a semi-decent frame rate. But you can see it suffers from some bad frame dips and a little bit of lag now and then. So disappointing performance really in terms of gameplay in dated old titles here. And I am probably going to die, so I'm just going to run out here and take a risk. Oh, I managed to get one headshot. That was a fluke. And this guy should have killed me. Whoop, he's about to. 
And yeah, a little bit laggy. See, even with that smoke and that fire right now, that is, that is really suffering. I managed to get a second kill. I can't believe no one's killed me yet. This has to be a killing streak fluke here from me. 100 frames per second right now, and okay, he managed to kill me. So there we go. Gaming is, yeah, it's average as you'd expect on a Core i3, even the 10th gen. Onto the fan noise now. So it can get a little bit loud, but only when you're doing something very demanding like gaming or benchmarking. That is when you hear the fan. That's when it's running at 100%, of course. And I'll just give you a very quick sample from the mic here pointed quite closely to it, just to give you an idea of the fan noise that under these kind of loads, slightly irritating, but you don't normally hear the fan too much. It's not actually that bad, but here's that fan sample. As for thermals on this one, so I do see peak temperatures of 84 to 85 degrees. I accidentally closed HW info, so I lost all the info before, but yeah, 85 degrees is where it's gonna peak at. Now, power consumption from the wall using my meter, you're looking at idle around seven to nine watts idle, and I'm seeing a peak power consumption that has gotten right up there to where the power supply is. So you're looking about 34, 35 watts max that it can pull and that was only gaming if you're doing different other benchmarks it will peak and get up to somewhere around 25 watts 28 watts it it does tend to move around a little bit it's just gaming we're going to get that maximum pull there of power from the wall so we do have a really decent build quality what i've seen now in all the minis for and mini pcs that i have reviewed that they do have an excellent build. Now the design wise of this one, a little frustrating to add the two extra SSDs if you wanted to do so. So if you wanted to add say an NVMe, oh you can't actually because that's already taken up, but a SATA 3 M.2, you can put it in there or a 2.5 inch drive to expand upon the storage. It's just frustrating to actually have to remove the back's fine coming off, but then having to take out a more further three screws and probably even best actually to remove the fan and the heatsink assembly on this, flip around the motherboard, then add your storage, is a little frust frustrating, and I wish they'd designed it a little bit differently to just make it a little bit easy, but it's still good at least to have that option. Now one of the best things about this is it does have Thunderbolt 3 support. For those of you out there that need Thunderbolt 3, then this of course has it. But as you saw, performance wise, well, it's a core i3, and even though it's 10th gen, they're now on the 11th gen, it still is with just the two cores and the four threads, nothing amazing there. So not ready for video editing at all, 1080p kind of maximum. I did briefly test out 4K and it's painfully slow. The timeline with Adobe Premiere Pro was just laggy there and I, that's why I don't recommend 4K video with this. Gaming wise, just old titles like League of Legends or Dota 2 or Counter-Strike on the last kind of settings, 720p, yeah, I mean, okay, but again, it's really, not that wonderful. Thermals are okay, getting up to about 84, 83, 85 degrees, depending on your ambient temperatures. A little bit of fan noise when under full low, but it's not too irritating there. It really comes down to the price of it as well, considering that Minis Forum also have Ryzen models out there with the 3000 series. I think you're probably better off getting one of those ones if you don't need the Thunderbolt 3 support, that is, of course. And I'm still, hopefully, probably not this, ne this year now, but early next year, be able to check out some Ryzen 4000 series from this particular manufacturer as well when they release them, which they are planning to do so. So that'll be good. So thank you so much for watching the review here of the X35G. Now you pretty much know the full story. Is it gonna meet your needs? Is it not gonna be powerful enough? Which I think a lot of people might skip it because of that power, lack of it, sadly.